Hey, what is going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing the Preaching to the Dead HCE map guide. Let's get straight into the video. So first off, I want to give you guys some updates. I recently was just on vacation, so that's why I didn't make a video last week, but I'm excited to be back and making new videos. Also, I just launched the Vortide channel Discord. I'm going to go ahead and include an invite in the bio of this video. And the first 10 people to join are going to get a special role. And what that role is, it's going to be called Original. And it basically just means that you're in the original 10 people to join. All right, so now let's talk some Albion. So one thing I want to go over that you guys have been asking me a lot about is stun duration. People will have 8-3 gear and max spec in their tanking gear. And they'll still see someone on YouTube be able to stun a mob and have the stun last for in eternity compared to their stuns and they're not sure why. So basically what it comes down to is the item quality of the Leering Cane. If you look at a masterpiece versus excellent Leering Cane, you'll see that the stun duration against mobs is 32% for the masterpiece and 30% for the excellent and so on. It keeps decreasing by 2% each item quality. So that's why you'll see some HCE guides where people are able to stun the mobs and just be able to get away untouched. Which that, you can do that with lower quality Lyrian Canes, but it is a lot harder. And that's why for eight, level 18 maps you're going to need 1800 IP because usually that means you're going to have the Lyrian Cane at Masterpiece because it's hard to get 1800 IP without having Masterpiece items. So that's probably why you're watching my guides because I'm showing you how to do these maps without all masterpiece gear because not everyone has that 50 to 70 million silver to spend on the masterpiece items. Alright after that long minute and a half of talking let's finally get into the guide. So obviously we're going to need the standard HCE tanking set. I covered this in one of my other videos HCE how to tank. But basically, people will sometimes bring a very expensive mount into HCEs, and if you go down, that's going to be a very hefty repair bill, so I recommend not doing that. Um, you're going to go ahead and bring the regular skip set, and for this map, you're going to need Skinner Boots and Equipped Scent of the Wilderness. This will allow you to go and pick up items without being attacked by mobs, so for the chest. And also for the boss, you're going to need a Black Monk Stave, which I'll go over what you need to equip on it at the end when we're fighting the boss. Also, don't forget Pork Omelette and Poisons, at least 10. So getting right into it, you can go ahead and just run past these skeletons. You can also use Dodge, but if you're trying to start right away and just get going, then you can just run right into them. Um, so there's going to be one archer that patrols over here, and you need to ask one of your DPSs to reset it, otherwise this could cause a lot of issues. You could take on this archer with the skeletons if you round them up, but it's usually a lot easier to just have the ar three archers together when you stun them because it just makes it a lot easier for grouping. So as usual, we're going to go ahead and use our W to stun the skeletons and then get away safely with our D. If they all hit you at the same time, they can't insta pop you, so you need to be careful. And our DPS reset the archer for us, we didn't even have to ask him, but you need to wait till the archer gets back to this area with the three other archers. Use your E to dodge their attack and stun them, Q to get aggro, then get your four hits around your third hit, use your R ability, and then use your W after you get your four hits, run away, and then you can use your F or D ability. I always prefer using the F to get away because you travel pretty far pretty quickly and you're obviously still invulnerable. But you're going to want to go ahead and just let your DPSs do the work. If they, if you start to lose aggro, then run a little closer to them and use either your D or F to dodge the arrows that come at you. But this shouldn't be too bad. These, these archers can kill you really easily if you let them all shoot you at once, but that's what your D and F abilities are for. So for this next pull, you need to wait until the archers meet together. That's the perfect time to use your E. Now in my situation, I had CDs, and obviously you don't want to rush into things if you have CDs. I know some people would be like, go, 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 but you never need to rush unless you're like towards the end of the map and you don't have enough time, then maybe. But make sure you really just wait for your CDs and do things properly, because otherwise it can result in that. You're going to go ahead and use your E ability to stun them. Use your Q, R, and then get your hits. Now the SC accidentally pulled the swordsman, so I had to handle him by just getting him in my W, which that's usually what you need to do if someone like pulls something extra and like it's in the middle of one of your pulls. 
just go ahead and stun them with the W with the rest of the mobs. It'll usually take care of all situations. But we need to go ahead and do another rotation. So we used our E ability to stun, and then we're getting our four hits while using our R. And it basically take care, takes care of everything. Now the Swordsman, you do not need to pull, because you can do some skeletons at the end of the map. It makes it easier, but... At the same time, doing that skeleton swordsman is not like a huge issue either. It's pretty easy. But so, someone ended up dying from the archer arrows. You know, that's nothing you can really control. That's on them. They have to be able to dodge that. But for this next part, you're going to go ahead and just skip through all the mobs. And you're going to want to come to this area where you could take the tree down and there's a swordsman and the scorpion. So for this pull, what you have to do is wait for the swordsman to be next to the scorpion, and then just run at them and use your E ability to stun them all. Use your Q for aggro, and then you can use R to decrease incoming damage. But for the scorpion, what you have to do is your teammates will be pulled by the chain, and once they get pulled by the chain, you need to use your Q ability on the scorpion and the skeleton to get aggro from them, so that way the scorpion and little skeleton don't attack your teammates. If you get pulled in, then you can either use a stun or use your F or D ability to get away. But it's it's pretty simple. It's not too hard. And then obviously you could pull these skeletons in the back. If you pull them at the same time as a, skele as a scorpion, it can cause a bit of an issue because they will do a decent amount of damage if you put them all in the same area. But otherwise, you could just stun them with your W and take care of these guys. For this next pull, you're going to want to wait until the two swordsmen and archer meet. You could do it with the archer and one swordsman, but you're going to want to make sure that you stun all three of the mobs, unlike I did, because it can cause an issue with the archer because they'll do a lot of damage to you. But get your four hits while using an R, then use your W. Get away with your D ability, and just find somewhere safe to hide out. Now, you can, like I said, wait for there to be only one swordsman and one archer and then take the two swordsmen at the next pull but I like doing it this way because the two swordsmen here don't really cause an issue unless you get hit by them which that's why you have your D and F abilities but we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next pull for this pull you're gonna want to use your F to jump over the skeletons your D to dodge the first attack of the swordsman and then your E to dodge the second attack while also stunning the enemies you get your Q off and your R, and then get your 4 hits and your W ability, and then run away. So, sooner or later, one of your DPSs will probably pull these skeletons. You can ask them to do it if they don't automatically do it. But, you need to time it, so when the skeletons are coming, make sure that you pull the two archers that are patrolling up at the top of the hill. And, you want to throw poison at them to get their attention. So we throw poison and then use our F ability to dodge their first arrows and then E to dodge the arrows coming in and then you can stun them as well at the same time and then you get your Q, your R, and then your W to stun and then run away. Then if you need you'll have your D to block any more incoming damage from them if you don't get away in time. But basically you just wait for the DPSs to do the rest of the damage and I was afraid I was going to lose aggro there so I went ahead and got close and used my D ability to make sure that I didn't lose aggro. This next pull can be a little bit tricky. These wizards are a pain in the butt to deal with. They can insta-pop your teammates really easily. But what you have to do is go ahead and use your E ability right away to dodge their first attacks. They're stunned. You can go ahead and get your three hits. And then I like to use my R and then run around them until I see these circles appear on the ground because those AoEs really are a pain in the butt. And then obviously get away from the enemies. Now, you're... DPS's should either stack on top of each other or one of them should be getting close because they the wizards summon another AoE that can be very deadly and it's mainly up to your DPS's to handle it. But we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. We're going to use our E to stun and then we're going to get our hits while using our R so we could absorb some damage from the wizard. And then once you see that AoE on the ground appear, then you can stun him and run away. And as you saw, one of the DPS's, the SC, triggered the little AoE that the wizard causes, so that's what they can do, but it really depends on your DPS's. For these skeletons, you can have a DPS pull it or just pull them and then stun them with your W. 
thing with the second group, a lot of time DPSs will just pull it for you and then you just give them the stun. Now you have to be very careful while setting up for this pull because what ends up happening a lot of times is someone pulls those mobs to the right and it does not end well when you do. They're impossible to take on unless you're doing a really low level map, but they are very hard to kill if you do accidentally pull them. Now for this pull you need to be careful. One of my DPS has also pulled the people on the left, which is not a good thing, but it's pretty easy to handle. You just need to take at least one hit or so, which it can be pretty devastating, but it won't kill you as long as it's just only one hit. And you're just going to go ahead and do what you usually do to the mobs and stun them and then your four hits while using R and then your W. And you just need to go ahead and repeat the rotation. But they're nothing like crazy, it's nothing you haven't dealt with before. Like earlier in the map you do two of these and the archer, so pretty self-explanatory. So there's going to be no audio for the next little segment of this video. I apologize for that. Someone was calling me in Discord, and I didn't want to hurt your guys' ears. But for this next pull, you could pull these two swordsmen together by using your F to dodge their first attack, and then your E to dodge their second attack. Get your four hits off, and then stun. You should be using your R ability, too, when you're getting your four hits in case the stun doesn't last for long enough, which we kind of cover in the beginning of the video why that happens. But basically let your DPSs do all the rest of the work and get your second rotation in if you need to. Now be careful pulling the swords, not the swordsman, but the really big swordsman with these small swordsmen because he can do this like weird AoE that extends very far and you don't want to get in the way of that. So I usually will take the swordsman out by himself and maybe with some of the little skeletons too. But you want to go ahead and just deal with this guy separately because doing them all together can be a pain in the butt. Now to handle these skeletons, ask one of your DPSs to pull them because then you don't have to worry about getting insta-popped when you stun them. But you can stun them once they're walking towards your DPS or if you think that they're going to be killed by the time they get there, you can just go ahead and do nothing. Now for this archer, we're going to use our F ability, then we use our E to stun them, get our four hits in, and then stun. And at this point we can run away and make sure you keep your distance because these archers have a decent range and I always find myself getting shot by one when I least expect it. For this next pull you're going to want to wait until the big swordsman patrols are gone and then throw a poison at the wizards and use your F to dodge their first attack. Once they run at you, you can use your E ability and it will interrupt their next attack and running far away from them makes them trigger their like AoE attack so you don't have to worry about missing it but then at this point once the wizards go ahead and use that storm on themselves you can run away and let your DPS do the rest. Now it's going to be very similar to the last pull you want to wait until these big swordsman patrols leave the area and then you can go and use a poison to pull these wizards and I was missing these two skeletons so I picked them up on the way but use your F ability to dodge their first attack. Your second attack go ahead and interrupt with your E and then go ahead and get at least three hits and activate your R ability to deflect incoming damage and then if you're waiting to stun them when they use their next like, bar attack make sure you're very careful and watch your health because they can kill you really quickly even with your R. So let your DPS do the rest, and then if you don't have enough mobs killed, which at this point you should, you can pull the room to the left. There's a whole bunch of skeletons in there and one swordsman, so it's pretty easy to take care of. But for the boss, you're going to want to go ahead and change your chest piece and your helmet to the shield icon passives, and so basically the defensive. And then you're going to want to equip the Black Monk Stave. For the abilities on the Black Monk Stave, you're going to want to use your Q as the first ability, your W as the fourth ability, and your E is always going to be the same. For the passive, you're going to want to use the third ability, and that's all you need for this boss. So, what you need to do on this boss, I kind of messed up and almost got that guy killed, which was my bad. But you're going to want to go ahead and use your W to interrupt whenever the boss uses the AoE. So not when he shoots the little frost pieces, but when the actual like circle comes on the ground, that's when you're going to want to use your W, and you need to make sure that you stand in your teammate's little CD reduction circle. And as you can see, I just used my W to interrupt it, and then I'm standing in the circle, and you're going to want to periodically use your E ability to go ahead and reduce the incoming damage, as well as use your R 
and then D and F to dodge. Now, that guy, he stood in the AoE, so you need to be a bit more careful. There's nothing you can really do about that, especially if you don't have the CD. Like, it's their job to make sure that you actually get the CD, and you obviously have to make sure you're standing in it. But, you know, you're not always going to have the W if things don't go according to plan. So, once again, you're going to go ahead and just keep what you're doing. Make sure you're really utilizing that E and R and then D and F. And we're going to go ahead and finish this boss off. We used our E to reduce the incoming damage again. We're waiting for the AoE circle right there. We're going to use our W to make sure that no one gets hurt in that. And then you're going to keep hitting and then using your Q periodically too to keep aggro. This is going to drain a lot of mana. But you need to do this for the boss, so it's pretty, it's essential. But as you can see, the boss was not too hard to kill. It's coming to the end. And this is honestly one of the more easy bosses. And now once you finish the boss, you need to go ahead and head back to the chest. Going back to the chest, you're going to go ahead and put on the skip set. And use your W and E, you're going to alternate them to go even quicker. But you want to make sure that you have your R and F abilities as invises because what can end up happening is if you accidentally aggro a mob that you shouldn't aggro, it could either pop you instantly or it could aggro onto one of your friends. So make sure you have the R or F ability available for invis. So just use your skip set. That's probably smartest. Yeah, as you can see here, I aggroed the wizard, so I just use my R and then run right past him. And then you're all good. Now this is the part where you're going to need to have your Skinner Boots. Your Skinner Boots are going to be used to go ahead and run to the chest and pick up the gold and items without being detected by the mobs. It's very helpful and it's essential for HCEs if you want to get certain chests. So now we're just waiting for someone to pop the chest. It takes this guy a couple tries. I don't know entirely what he was doing but he wasn't able to pop the chest right away but you just kind of have to wait for one of the dps's to do their part and destroy the chest and then you're going to want to use your w and then your f ability the w because you want to run quicker and the f makes you run even quicker but you need to be very careful at the same time because your f ability only lasts for so long and if you accidentally you know run out of time using it you're just going to get insta killed by a lot of these mobs whenever you're going for chests so as you can see, we're waiting for the chest to pop, it popped, so then you can use your W ability, and then use your F ability, makes a really weird sound, and then you can pick up the silver and your loot items, and that basically sums up this map. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this guide and found it helpful, I really enjoyed making it, and I can't wait to make more guides. Sorry that this video took so long, I ended up going on vacation, which was really fun, and I plan on getting more videos out soon. Thanks for watching. Peace.